Hello, so here we go again with our fourth part to the equity method uh, series. And we're getting more and more in-depth uh, knowledge in terms of equity method. So we are now, we mentioned before in our part three, um, we had an example where a big company had purchased 20% of lit of company. And we kind of uh, were told that, that they purchased this investment for 200,000. And we didn't really put too much thought into how do they come up with this 200,000. So now we're going into how exactly is this value assessed and what happens if there are any differences between our value and the book value of the company. So as we said, you know, there might be differences between uh, the fair market value of the company's assets or net assets and uh, the values that we're reporting on the balance sheet, mainly because of historical cost principle, right? So some assets and liabilities will be reported at cost while others will be reported at fair value. And so uh, it may not match in its totality to the fair value of net assets of the company. We also use estimates in accounting. So we use estimates for or different costing methods for inventory. We use estimates for depreciation, for the allowance for uh, doubtful accounts, etc. And this is going to have an effect on these differences between fair value and net book value. Uh, so what we need to do is identify where are these differences coming from and in the event that we're unable to identify the difference then we may call this goodwill so as we go through the examples um, throughout not, not just this presentation but future for presentations you need to keep that in mind So here's an example. Uh, we have Grande Company, uh, which is trying to purchase 30% of uh, Chico's uh, shares. And uh, Chico's balance sheet right now reports assets of 500,000 and liabilities of 300,000 for a net book value of 200,000. So just to rem let's let's go back to our uh, initial uh, financial accounting course where we learned the accounting equation and we said that assets equal liabilities plus equity. Now, if we uh, solve this equation for equity, then we have that our assets less our liabilities equal equity. And this equity is basically represents the net book value of the company or sometimes called the net assets. Okay, so if you know the problem you're working on, it says uh, stockholders equity or it says net book value or it says net assets, they all mean the same. It's the assets minus the liabilities. And in this case, we're told that uh, you know when we compare Chico's balance sheet. Uh, with the fair market value, we uh, identified two assets that were undervalued on the balance sheet. One was the equipment, uh, which was undervalued by 60000 and the patent, which is undervalued by 40000 And so when we look at the valuation of assets and liability for Chico, we come up with a fair market value of net assets of 300000 so we can see um, that uh, we have a difference between the book value and um, the fair value. And that difference seems to be $100,000 in this case. Now, since we're grande and we want to purchase 30%, of uh, Chico's, then what we're going to do is we're going to offer 30% uh, of that 300,000, the fair market value, to be fair. And so we're paying 90,000 to acquire the 30%. Uh, 
if we're looking at this difference between the oops the book value and the fair market value, we say we notice that there's a difference of a hundred thousand, and we can see that this difference of a hundred thousand comes from uh, the the assets that were undervalued, the equipment and the patent. So what happens to this difference? Okay, so before we go into that, let's take a look at the steps that we need to take in order to analyze these transactions, okay? Uh, we're going to divide this into three steps. In our step one, we're going to identify who's the investor and who's the investee and what is the ownership or the percentage that we're actually negotiating or we're purchasing or have purchased, etc. So in this case, we have that Grande is the investor and Chico is the investee. The percentage was already given to us, but it may not be. It may be um, total shares, and then you're told how many shares you are purchasing, and so you're going to have to assess or calculate the percentage. Uh, the other item that we need to consider is the consideration transfer. So exactly how much are we paying to purchase uh, this entity, this investment, uh, and, and how are we paying for this? Are we paying in cash? Are we issuing a note payable? Are we issuing stock? Now, this may not be as complex in this chapter, but as we move on to consolidation, uh, these are aspects that we need to look at. Uh, the third one under step one is probably not uh, viable, something that we're gonna be using for the equity method in chapter one, but I just wanted to throw it out there for you to get used to uh, the term and what that means, and it's a contingent liability. We're gonna see more of this on the consolidation um, aspect of um, financial statements. Uh, for step two, we're looking at the fair market value of the entire company. In the case of Chico, that was the 300000 and then the consideration that we are willing to pay in order to acquire X amount of shares or X amount of ownership percentage. And in step three, we're making a comparison between the our, our price, the purchase price, our consideration transferred versus our share of the company's net book value. Okay, so note that I'm saying here our share of the company next book values. I'm not in Chico's case, the net book value was two hundred thousand. So it wouldn't make any sense to compare the 90,000 that we're paying with 200,000, right? We need to compare 200,000 times 30% to the 90,000. Uh, and then if there's a difference, okay, so if that consideration transfer is greater than our share of the company's debt book value, then we need to identify what the what the difference is where is it coming from is it from under or overvalued assets and or liabilities and then our share of that difference if we have an unexplained difference that unexplained difference would be goodwill and again this last um topic or or a point that i wanted to make is probably not relevant for chapter one, but it will be in the future. So I kind of wanted to throw it out there. So for you guys to start thinking about this. So what happens when the consideration transfer is less than our share of the net book value? And in that case, we may have a gain. And so continue on with this example. Uh, we have, uh, again, we um, are paying uh, the net book value of Chico's, uh, the fair, I'm sorry, not net book value, but the fair market value of Chico's net assets was 300000 We are uh, purchasing 30% of this company, so we're paying 90000 30% of Chico's net book value is 60000 So we have 
a difference of 30,000. And as we said before, this difference comes from the undervalued equipment and patent. So note that again, we're taking 30% of these differences, okay? And so that uh, makes up the 30,000. We did not have an unexplained difference, so no goodwill. Okay, so the 90,000, uh, we're going to debit investment in Chico, and then uh, they didn't tell us otherwise, so we're going to assume that we pay cash for it. So this will be our journal entry at this point. And then our question is, what happens to this difference? I mean, uh, it can stay sitting on the investment in Chico account forever because these are assets that are being used, okay? Um, and the patent uh, has a limited life. And so we need to get rid of these differences. So how do we get rid of these differences is through amortization. And we're calling it amortization at this point because we're talking about an overall investment. Uh, later on, we're going to maybe split it up between depreciation and amortization. But at this point, for just uh, the less than 20%, uh, I'm sorry, the 20 to 50% interest, uh, we're talking about amortization. And of course, uh, just like uh, our previous knowledge of property planning equipment and intangibles, we're not going to amortize land, goodwill, or any other indefinite life intangibles. And so the cost uh, assigned, this is the 30%, right? 30% of that difference was 18,000 for equipment and 12,000 for patent. And they had they given us the useful life. So uh, we come up with 1,800 of amortization, annual amortization for a total of $4,200. So what happens to this? How do we journalize this difference? So we're going to debit, so we're going to reduce the respective accounts. We're going to reduce uh, equity income uh, by the 4,200, by the amount of amortization. And we're going to uh, reduce our investment in Chico Company for the 4200 So going back to the T accounts uh, that we looked at in previous presentations, we can see that the amortization is going to decrease our investment in Chico in this case, and is going to decrease our equity in investee income on the income statement.